Hey everyone, it's Maria here, makeup artist and green beauty expert located in Toronto, Canada. Today I'm here for an easy professional photo shoot makeup tutorial. So this would be perfect if you're getting headshots. I know a lot of my clients are doing that right now and it was one of my clients who actually inspired this video. So thank you so much for this idea. I think this is um, important to have on hand. Not everyone can afford a makeup artist or has one available when you decide to update your photos for LinkedIn, Instagram. So it's really important to know, you know, how you would do your makeup so it can look professional for your photos. It can look classic, timeless, so you can use your photos for years to come. All right. So if you're interested in seeing how I did this professional makeup look that would look amazing for professional headshots, any photo shoot that you have coming up for your business, then just keep watching. Okay, everyone. So the most essential thing before you start the makeup is to have your skin prepped for makeup. I ask my clients to always come with cleansed and moisturized skin. And even though they tell me they've moisturized, I always end up adding my own skincare to their faces. And I find that it drinks it up beautifully. So today I'm going to use uh, this smooth priming serum. This one here is by Puranata and this has some um, hyaluronic acid and chamomile which is um, fantastic very soothing to the skin but also very hydrating so you're gonna do um, you know a good amount here and this goes on like a serum right so it's gonna help the skin look radiant and boost you know hydration especially um, because the weather has gotten you know, cooler, and I find that the skin just drinks this beautifully on everyone. If you find that it's soaked up right away, I just added a bit more. As long as your skin is drinking it, you can add some more. You can see that it's just really light. We help the makeup kind of, you know what, here it has a little bit of a tacky feel when it's in the skin. The other issue I find right now with cooler weather is people's lips. So we're gonna go in with this Consonant Hydra Extreme Lip Advanced Serum. People love this and we're gonna apply it to the lips just a little bit. Okay, and that way they're ready for the lipstick later on. And we also wanna add some moisturizer, all right? So we did the serum and I'm gonna do a tiny bit of moisturizer on top. This is the Berry Rich by Graydon. Not too much, just a tiny bit especially if you find that someone is dry. So just you can just add it on the drier areas of the face. This is also an eye cream. So you can use that as you need it and just push it into the skin. It doesn't have to be everywhere, but I just find that it's, you can never be too moisturized or too hydrated. I find, especially, you know, with mature skin, Okay, the rest can go on the back of my hands. So the second thing here would be the base to the skin. So I find that I have neutral undertones. So that means that silver or gold jewelry can look good on me. And my best foundation match, um, which is great for a photo shoot, would be the Pure Nada um, Smooth and Conceal. This is the liquid foundation in the 20N, and N stands for neutral. So this is the shade buff. But if you find that you have a lot of redness on the skin, you need something to counteract that. In that case, I could go for the um, 20W, which is the warmth. So this is going to have a little bit more of a yellow uh, undertone to the foundation. And you can see that they are different. You can see that this appears um, a lot more yellow. This is the shade sand. And this one is a little bit on the cooler side. So if you have redness, find something that matches your skin tone, but has slightly uh, a more yellow undertone. So for me today, I am going to use the 20N, which is buff. And I'm going to apply a little bit on the top of my hand. I'm going to go in with Pure Nada's face blending brush. This will help just the application go on, um, you know, a lot quicker. Take it and just st stipple it all over the skin. I find that the middle of the face needs the most foundation, so I tend to start there. And if you are red and if you have any, you know, textural issues, like usually in the middle, um, you can see it more. If you have textural issues, you know, just forget about going super heavy to try and cover it. You're not going to be able to do that. So just uh, ask your photographer if you there is something 
um, that is really bothering you to maybe touch that up whatever is left over in this brush and I am going to go over my eyelids we are going to correct there as well and conceal now your neck all right let's talk about that really quickly I find that um, depending on the photographer the the area of the neck is going to like be untreated as I like to call it because you're going to have makeup everywhere else right but what about the neck so depending on the shirt and the color that you're wearing I would bring a little bit of that foundation down to the neck, especially in the center, because that is going to be in the pictures and, and you don't want that to look different or come in the photos like really stark white, especially at this time of year. So bring it down a tiny bit and we're going to do the same with the powder and a little bit of bronzer later on. Okay, so next we want to go and correct the under eye area. So depending on how much darkness you have, there are a few different products. Um, I've talked about these in previous videos. This one here, the Kaja um, is the brightener. Yeah, a peach brightener. This one is uh, called Catnap. Um, and I like this one. I use it on uh, photo shoots on my clients. So it has a really nice applicator. The other one would be um, Smashbox and Becca's um, also a primer. This is an under eye brightening corrector. This is um, not a primer, a corrector. It's a f the fair and light shade. So depending on what you have going on there. Okay, so I applied a bit on my hand here. You're just gonna go and correct. I find the inner corners need it the most and a bit to counteract any darkness on this outer corner I definitely need that so you can go and push this in and then we're gonna go in and follow up with a concealer so this is just to correct anything that's left on the brush I am gonna bring it on top of my eyelid now you could use an eye primer if you wanted to but I find that these products um, the concealer and the corrector for the eye uh, do wonders on the top of the eye because a lot of us uh, have discoloration there that we want to counteract so you also want to be careful not to use too too much product because you don't want your makeup to look cakey and even though we're going for a light professional look here that doesn't mean that there is no makeup on the face there is makeup on the face it just shouldn't be you know taking over for concealer I'm going to use pure Nada's, uh, prime Yes, Prime and Perfect Concealer, and I'm going to use it in the Porcelain. This is their lightest shade, and I find that I, I appreciate how it lifts, um, you know, the darkness underneath my eyes and also the face a little bit too. So I'm going to place it again here where this deepest circle is. So same thing, inner corner. This brush I'm using is a you know a dual brush I got it at a show a very long time ago it's a no-name brush but um, I love that it has it's like a foundation brush it has the kind of stiffer um, you know bristles um, anyways really great to work with if you are out and you find a brush like this um, I know Mac has one that's very similar I'm gonna list it below although it is not dual ended I find that you know why not have two brushes in one why is the other end always you know just a handle it's just more convenient to have a couple of brushes so always opt for those when you can find them now if you have some redness close to the lash line you can bring the concealer up there anything again that's left over drag it across the top eyelid you can act as your primer and counteract any eyelid darkness okay and I find that when I do the application it takes about an hour when I do it for photo shoots not on myself on my clients and uh, the correcting the priming and correcting aspect of the makeup always takes the longest because I don't go really heavy with the color but the skin has to look the best okay my chin has a bit of redness so why not do a bit there okay so now just make sure there are no, there's no makeup in the little lines underneath the eye. And if you want to brighten even more and also set at the same time, 
Pure Nada has these little correcting powders. This is a loose mineral powder. This is saffron, it's yellow. And I like how it counteracts kind of like the mauve, mauve undertones. Don't worry, you're not gonna look yellow. We're gonna use such a tiny amount. And just grab a, you know, a brush. You just need to pick up a tiny bit. Flick off any excess. And it's gonna set the eye very, uh, you know, carefully here. I wanna set and I don't wanna have any creasing, just the concealer, okay? Do you see there is a difference from the one eye to the other, the one that we did? So such a tiny little powder, but so great to have for sure. Okay, so I'm just working with the smallest amount and just pushing it into the skin where we apply the concealer and where those movie undertones are. Okay, so let's move on to the eyebrows. The eyebrows have to be done, guys, all right? So I don't care what you use. I don't, doesn't matter what product you use, okay? So just brush them to just remove some of the makeup and the powders. And then you kind of need to see, you know, where you're missing the hairs. So I like to kind of brush them down first to see like where I'm missing. And you know, the hair doesn't always grow where you want it. That is the fate of the eyebrows, all right? You can do a powder. You don't want your eyebrows to be too, too dark for a professional photo shoot. So Pure Nata has these little powders. This is flint. It's a light ash. You don't want to have super dark, overpowering brows. So that, that is really, really important. So I really love working with these powders. They give you so much product and they are totally inexpensive. So you have a lot of product there. Lots you can do with that. You can even use it as an eyeshadow because it is a loose powder. I'm gonna go in with the, the Plume Duo Eye Brush here. All right, and I'm just gonna start filling in the color. You see what difference it made already? So there is hair there, but there are gaps. So we do wanna follow the natural brow line. And I am going to go in after that with the Plume Brow Gel, which I love so, so much to keep everything in place. But first, let's kind of get this eyebrow how we want it. You see already the difference. I do need a little bit more at the top there. Okay, make sure that your brow doesn't come too far down, but you also don't want it to be like missing the tail, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So, and it shouldn't be too boxy at the front either. So that looks like a good amount of powder to me. You can already tell the difference and how fuller it is and how much more it lifts the face on this side. And then I'm gonna go in with the Nourish and Set by Plume. This is the brow gel in the shade Ashy Daybreak. Sometimes when I don't have you know highlights in my hair, I can go for the Chestnut Decadence, but, that, but as I said already, you don't wanna have a super dark brow, especially because we're not gonna do any heavy eye makeup. And you just kind of want to brush this through. It's gonna give the powder a bit of a pop, and it's also gonna set the brow in place. Now, if you have perfectly, I don't know, filled in or your eyebrow hair grows in perfectly, maybe this brow gel is all you need. It, they're just so easy to use. You just kind of like drag it across and, all right, and there we go. But you see what a difference it makes to the face, balances out the hair, but it's not as dark as my hair. So you just want to be conscious with that. So flint for the powder, if you like the softer look of a powder, and then the Ashy Daybreak for the brow gel, okay? So I'm gonna go to the other side. Okay, almost done here. So with the brow, the only thing you wanna be able to really balance is the height of the brow. I know one of my brows comes higher, and if that's the case, sometimes I brush this one down, where this one doesn't come as high and it needs to be brushed up. So just play around so you get them to match and then finish up just like the other side. Okay, you're gonna finish up with this Ashy Daybreak Brow Gel by Plume. I love the little spoolie. It can get in all the way to the tail here. Just give it a bit of definition. There you go. And now that the brows are done, let's talk a little bit about the eyes, okay? So you can tell that right now the most dominant feature on my face are my brows because they've been done and the eyes kind of disappear because they haven't been done. So you want to, it doesn't matter what eye shape you have, um, you want to create definition on the eyes, but you want it to be light. You don't want it to be heavy. You don't want to close up the eye. You want the eyes to be on the map 
and just appear open and a little bit bigger, you know, if possible, I guess, open and not like overpowering. So it all depends on, you know, what is your profession? Like, what do you do? So let's say, for example, uh, you know, you work in the healthcare industry or perhaps you are, I don't know, a fashion designer. So all of that plays a role. So for me, I always need to know my customer, my client, when I'm doing their makeup, I need to know who they are and what they do, because I feel like that will come out and represent them in the makeup. Of course, you want the makeup to be timeless and classic so they can use it for years to come, but you also don't want to misrepresent them in how you do their makeup, right? So for the eyes, usually what I try to do is I play around with the neutrals, I add some definition and I keep the eye nice and open and then just, you know, balance it out with the lipstick and blush. So let's get to that. So Piranata has these little palettes that can be customized and I've popped in some colors here and three of those in here. So the ivory tower, clouded and smoke up here. So these are definitely my trifecta for photo shoots. I also put in here the, no, the one, it's kind of, it's a demi matte, or I guess it's a matte bronzer in alluring versus the, you know, a little bit more shimmery shade, which is bronzed clove that I, I use. So we'll play with that as well. And then um, up here we have one shade, I believe it's illusion. Um, one shade that is a little bit more shimmery that wouldn't be so bad a tiny bit in the middle of the eyelid. So when you have a photo shoot, you have to be mindful of how many shimmers you use, how shimmery the makeup is. It cannot be totally frosty. It's going to drive your, your photographer nuts. So always be conscious with that. And what I'm going to start to do, so we powdered the eye. So I want to go in, I'm going to start with that mid-tone here. So with, this is the shade Clouded. And I'm taking this Piranata brush, which I forget the name, I believe it's the eye contour brush. I'm going to link everything for you below. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the color, you know, tap it a little bit. And then you want to look straight into your mirror and you want to start kind of creating a contour here. You want to give the eye some shape. Now, if you close your eye, you're not going to get it right. It's going to come too far down and then if you have a hooded eyelid, you're going to open up your eyes and you're not going to be able to see it at all. So I kind of, you know, look straight, but like look a little bit down it just so you can kind of carve it out, smooth my hand a little bit further down because you want to have a little bit of control. So kind of carve it out so you can see it when your eyes are open. You see that? And then just start creating uh, a little bit of that shadow. And after you have it in place, you can definitely lower your lid just so you can really get in there and you want to you know, bring it almost all the way in. I don't go all the way down to the corner, but you just want to blend it really well. Don't worry about coming too far up to the eyebrow. You're not. You want to be able to kind of carve a shape here to the eye, especially if you have a hooded eyelid. This is really, really important. And you need to do that with a, you know, a mid-tone matte shade. Can you see that? The warmth already that's created there versus this eye here that doesn't have anything. So I'm just doing little tiny wiggly little circles here and just kind of fade it into that inner corner. The important thing here is that when you open up your eye, you're able to see what we've just done. If you can't see it, then you've gone too low. So you can just tap the color a little bit upward. You can bring it upward a tiny bit. And then I also kind of start blending it. Whatever's left over on my brush, I start blending it down a little bit onto the outer corner of the eye and into that lash line, just a tiny bit. Okay, after that, I'm going to go in with the Everyday Eye Brush. Again, this is by Purinata. And I'm going to pick up that darker matte shade. So this is here. This here is the small. Okay, so we're going to pick that up too. Tap the brush in there. Give it a little tap. And with this one, this shade here, it's not going to go as high up. It's going to go just on that outer corner of the eye and I'm kind of getting it to go deeper into that crease to help lift the eye here and give it some more definition. Okay, so we're not going as high up, keeping it lower onto the lid and then so it's like an outer V and then kind of pushing it down on the outer part of the eye and into that lash line. With the intensity, you know, go slow. You can add more. You cannot remove it once it's on there. You're going to mess up all the other stuff that we have on there. So just take your time, tap the, the brush lightly, and you can always add a bit more just to deepen that. 
okay, and once you have it, you know, as dark as you want it, you can stop, right, if the intensity is okay. Remember, everything looks lighter on camera. A lot of the color I find sometimes is washed out. I'm going to take a tiny bit more just on the tip of that brush, and I'm going to add a tiny bit on the outer part of the bottom lash line here. If you make a mistake and you come too far down, you know, please don't worry about it. Take that brush that we used before with a concealer and you can always clean things up. And then we have the ivory tower here. This is a matte kind of ivory shade. And I'm going to take that with Piranata's dual eye brush here. And I'm going to use the flat side, of course. I'm going to pick up this color here, the ivory tower. And I'm going to start adding it from the inner corner of the eye and onto the that middle part, just fading it. Okay, so just kind of fading it into those other colors. The brightness I find on the tear duct also opens up the eye a little bit. Here it makes it appear, you see that in the inner tear duct, makes it appear brighter and more open. And I don't go all the way in because then we kind of start getting into those topes that we did. Okay. And then you could take something more fun like Illusion or if you have another type of a satin finish, just take a tiny bit. You can take it with your finger. You don't need a brush. You could do a tiny bit on the center. Now, don't do too much because you don't want to be shimmery. You just want it to be very, very subtle. Okay, just to bring a bit of light to that center area of the eye. Second to last thing that I would add on this eye here, I'm going to finish this eye for you to show you how it's done would be an eyeliner, okay? So I never use black with any of my clients. So I am going to use brown for this one. So this is Pure Anara's uh, eye line pencil. It's nice and soft. So it's the Pure Line eye pencil in brown. And I'm going to use that lightly along the lash line. I'm not going to do a wing because I don't think that suits all eye shapes. And I want to keep it professional. I don't want to have a like a big winged liner that might not, you know, be something that you do. So when your clients meet you, you know, they see your profile picture on LinkedIn or they see your profile picture, you know, on your business account or Instagram, you know, you have a certain look. I want you to be able to replicate that. So with the, you know, the liner here, we're just going to drag it along the lash line just to give our eyes some definition. So I call this like a natural lash line because I'm not going to go beyond the lashes and try not to go too heavy on the that inner corner. It's going to, I mean, the eye should appear not heavier, but thicker. The lash line should appear thicker on the outer of the, of the eye. So don't go too heavy on the inner corner. Just kind of like drag it across and just kind of fade it out. I also find that it never stays on that inner corner so well. Um, the pencil, I mean, more chance of it moving around. All right, and then you can also go underneath. So let me just put my mirror down here. And this makes a difference too. You can tight line. So hard doing it without a mirror. Okay, I did an okay job. You see the difference? Okay, so that is it. If you want to set the pencil in place, if you find that things you know, slide on you, you could definitely do that. You could go back to that dual eye brush and you could take the angled side. You can go back to smoke and you could take a tiny bit of that and you just, you can just go and press it, press smoke right onto that pencil liner. Okay. What, what do you do with the end here? I mean, it ends right at your lashes. You could just, you know, with that brush kind of soften it up a tiny bit but no wing. So how you end it there, you know, you can bring it a little bit to, to a soft point and then with the brush, um, just go in and, and just soften it a bit. And we did the tight lighting too, which makes such a difference. And then I'm going to go in with some nice black mascara. I, I always do black for the lashes. Um, I'm not a big fan of false lashes, but if my client wants it, I will do it. I feel like once you have false lashes on, you can see that there's false lashes on. Um, unless you want to do some individuals on the outer corner, uh, that is a pre personal preference and it just depends if you need it. So I'm going to use the Bloom um, Nourish and Amplify Mascara. So this is a growth mascara. Uh, I absolutely love it. Really nice uh, brush applicator. And you want to do a really good application of mascara. If your eyes are super sensitive and you're not into tight lining, um, I've shown this in other videos. This is how you tight line the the lashes and I guess the lash line too is by bringing it really deep into that base and wiggling it on your way out. And then if you want to do the lashes, if you have really long bottom lashes, don't do anything to them. Um, 
you know, if you have, if you have, you know, mine, I don't know, I guess are kind of like medium size, so you can do a tiny bit on the outer corner here. All right. So let's add some cheek color. Let me show you how that's done. If you have a powder bronzer that works for you, of course, you can do that to warm up the skin. If your skin is dry and it tends to look dry, um, you know, and I don't know, it drank up all the skincare and it still feels dry, I would recommend that you use a cream blush, all right? It's going to look a lot dewier on the skin um, and it's just going to melt in with the makeup and give it a beautiful finish effect. So a few options here. There is the matte in alluring. There is the one that has a little bit of that iridescence and that's the bronzed clove. Um, remember, you don't want to be too, too shimmery, which is also the reason why I love these ones here. So this one here is Isabella. I use this one a lot. So this is the Lip and Cheek Tint by Pure Nada. It's an Echo Cert certified cheek color. And I love this one here. Isabella is a beautiful, like, peachy pink shade. It looks gorgeous on everyone. And I love applying it with a brush. So you need to remove a little bit. You need to take a tiny bit of this blush. I put it on my hand, or you can do it on a little palette. Okay, like so. And then you're going to take that face blending brush by Pure Nada or like a looser bristle brush. Like this is synthetic, so great for cream colors um, as well as foundation. And you're going to start picking up this color into the bristles. That's kind of the effect that your cheek is going to have. All right. And we're going to start like kind of adding it onto the skin. Now, don't start too low down. You don't want to get it too close to your nose and you don't want to be close to this line, okay? This nasolabial fold here can make everything look heavier if you come too far down. So I find that I kind of start up on the cheekbone and then work my way to the hairline a little bit just to kind of give a bit of warmth. And if you feel like you added too much, wait for it to settle down, okay? So you see how much more lifted the face is here and it has, you know, more color and kind of definition you want a bit more on the cheek just you know same brush like I didn't pick up anything else just move maneuver this color around a little bit and if you find that you put too much on go in with a you know a, a blank brush and just kind of like sweep it over just to mix it in but wait for it to settle down all right so I'm gonna go catch up on the other side with what we did and we're gonna come back together to finish the lid. okay so just putting the finishing touches on this eye um, you noticed I didn't cur curl my lashes today. If this is something you love to do, please do that. If your lashes are pointing downwards, please do a bit of a curl. It makes a huge difference. And don't forget to get that mascara right into the base of those lashes. We go like back and forth to build the fullness um, at the base of your lashes and not at the tips. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit of this bronzer here, just lightly, tap off the excess, and I'm just gonna bring it like underneath and a bit down. We had talked about that before, uh, warming up your neck a little bit. So you can do that with a blush brush. A smaller brush, blush brush is best. Something that's a little bit, you know, you can squish it down, something that's a little bit slimmer there at the front. For the lips, if red is your signature, that is your brand, that is what you wear, go for red. For most of us, for professional photos, I find that something more nude, something more classic is, uh, you know, best. So I love the two lip liners by Pure Nada. One is the warm nude here, right? And one is the pink nude. Okay, so I'm going to go with the pink nude today and I'm going to line the lip, make sure that that serum is either, you know, fully absorbed or dab it off. And then with the uh, pink nude, I'm going to pair it up with the lipstick by Tint Feather in Veiled. And I love the shade. It's a beautiful pinky nude. You want to be able to give your lips a little bit of a pop. If that pinky nude, when you apply it, makes you look washed out and you cannot even see where that you know, you cannot see where that lip liner is or that lipstick is, please go for something with a little bit more pop. I promise you, because we've kept everything else neutral, um, a lip that's a little bit brighter is not going to look, um, you know, bad or loud. So look at your lips 
with nothing on and then see if, you know, is this something that's going to wash you out once the flash is on, if once the lights are on. You can also line it with a natural lip liner such as the one I'm using now and then go in and fill it in with any color that you like. Um, I find that this lip liner looks very, you know, flesh toned and we're just adding a bit of grip. This is also going to make your lipstick last through the photo shoot. What do you think? I feel like that's it's a beautiful classic look for a photo shoot. It looks professional. Again, consider what your business area is and you know, what looks professional and what speaks to your brand for you. So this is one way to do it. The other way would be to go with something that has a bit more pop. Now, this color here is Voila. I use this a lot for branding photo shoots. Um, I use it a lot on clients. Sometimes they see it and they're like, oh, it's a little bit too bright. But I promise you, once the flash and the lights are on, um, you know, your lips might disappear. So keep that in mind and you can give a little bit more pop to your lips. You don't have to push too hard. This is a raspberry shade, right? Just picture the lights and picture the camera. And if your photographer tends to shoot light, even things like the blush can disappear. Okay. Just keep these things into consideration. Bring a couple of lipstick shades to your lipstick and see how, you know, the photographer shoots. If you're not familiar with their style, ask them to see um, another headshot maybe that they just did or get them to take the first one. Have a look at it. Don't be embarrassed to ask that. This is your photo shoot. You're paying for this. So ask them to snap a, a photo and get, have a look, right? If you don't have a makeup artist there, I do this for my clients. I have a look at the camera. But if you don't have someone there for you, you need to do that yourself. And have a look at the picture. Have a look at the lips. Like, are you disappearing into the background? Are you disappearing in that photo? Or can you actually, you know, see all your features? That's very, very important. And lastly, before you go on camera, have a look in the mirror, um, bring your powder, do a little, you know, T-zone. If things uh, sometimes disappear on you, even kind of setting that uh, powder blush in place will make it last. Chin, you know, the nose. Have a look at that, okay? If you're shiny anywhere. And then the last thing you want to do is set your face. Um, so I'm just going to use the NYX Matte Setting Spray. I use this a lot for photo shoots. And you're just going to spray that. And you're just going to let it kind of set into the skin. And I should have said, before you do that, before you set everything, make sure that your eyes, like nothing has creased, right? Otherwise, then you're setting you're setting the crease in place, so that's not what you want. All right. So this is the finished look. Okay, everyone. Some other tips I can give you for your hair. I would recommend definitely, like, go get it blow-dried somewhere, okay? One less thing to worry about unless you're really good at blow-drying your hair. I seriously suck at doing my whole hair unless it's curly. So when you see me on the videos and it's blow-dried and it's straight, someone else does that for me, and then I don't have to worry about it. So I do the same for the photo shoots. I focus on my client's makeup, which takes about an hour to do for a full application. And then I have someone else take care of the hair or I have them, you know, get it done before they come to see me. Other things would be if your color is not getting touched up, you are having the photo shoot come up and it's bugging you. Grab one of those little things. This is, um, you know, just some hair powder. I picked it up at Shoppers Drug Mart. This one here is great for my hair. I forget what shade it is. It's just a temporary root touch up, but it's really great to have, especially if you are feeling self-conscious about any little whites that are popping up. I know everybody's embracing these now, but it might not be uh, for you just yet. So very important, have something like this on hand. The other thing would be, you know, check any flyaways. So these are very um, easy to just touch up with a little bit of hairspray. So I recommend if you don't have uh, a hair, uh, you know, a hairstylist or a makeup artist who's going to be there for you, just bring your, bring a bag of your own little things, you know, some powder, bring a little bit of hairspray just to tame any flyaways and just keep your hair, you know, neat and professional. Pin it back. What, that I've done, like I've done here, uh, my hair is curly, so it doesn't always look the same. It doesn't look the same every single day. 
my curly hair girls, you know what I mean? So just bring a couple little things to do that with. Other recommendations would be jewelry. Keep it minimal. Um, you know, little studs like this are great. You have something little on your ears, looks professional. I used to teach college for a long, long time, and this is pretty much what I looked like in the classroom, believe it or not. So, you know, okay, something minimal around the neck, just so you have something like don't go for trendy, go for classic minimalist. And for colors, I would really advise you not to wear black. If this is a business look that you would wear, something like this can look very professional. My jacket is thinly uh, thin striped. Uh, it's like a dark um, gray with a really, really thin pin stripe. Um, it has a matching skirt. Believe it or not, I had these tailored and made for me in Vietnam a very, very long time ago. So if a jacket, you know, is you, then go for that. For any other, anybody else who wouldn't wear a jacket or um, a blouse like this to work, even a blouse like on its own looks beautiful. Make sure it's, uh, you know, steamed. Make sure you, you know, you have a nice crisp, crisp collar. And if it's not, it doesn't have collar um, you know, that's fine too. Just something that speaks to you, your brand and what it is that you do. And my last tip, and I send this to my clients via email before we have the makeup done is please don't do any crazy treatments the night before the photo shoot. People think, oh yeah, I'm just going to like plump up my skin and I don't know, do a facial or go get something done. Please do not do that the day before the photo shoot. Um, earlier in the week, that's fine. Or maybe the week before is also okay. So, you know, keep that in mind. You're, you know, you might uh, react or break out or something, and then you have the photo shoot the next day. So you definitely want to keep that into consideration. If you feel like doing something to plump up the skin, you know, before you go on camera the next day, I would advise, you know, just get something really hydrating, like a sheet mask, um, something with hyaluronic acid, something that's plumping, and it's not going to be irritating and perhaps something that you've used before so you know that it agrees with your skin. And apply that overnight and then in the morning, do your skincare like I showed you and apply the makeup, all right? So this would be my tips. I hope you enjoyed this look that is uh, hopefully a classic look that you can use for any headshots or professional photo shoots for your business that are coming up. Please give the video a thumbs up if you loved it and subscribe to my channel to get all the content that I provide uh, one video every week. I appreciate you so much being here. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Bye.